Hello, welcome to the Mark Janot Show, the cybersecurity show. In this video, I'm going to talk about how hackers bypass kernel anti-cheats. So without further ado, let's get right into it. We're going dark. So hackers bypass kernel anti-cheats by exploiting vulnerabilities in the operating system and using various techniques to evade detection. So here are some key methods. Number one, you have injection and direct memory access, right? That's when hackers inject malicious code into the kernel to gain direct access to system memory, allowing them to manipulate game data and bypass anti-cheat measures. Then you have kernel driver exploitation. That's when exploiting vulnerabilities in kernel driver can provide hackers with elevated privileges el enabling them to disable anti-cheat systems or inject their own code you have creating custom kernel drivers right that's when hackers can develop their own kernel drivers to bypass anti-cheat systems these drivers can directly access kernel functions making it difficult for anti-cheats to detect them and then you have external hardware cheats that's when you know using external hardware devices hackers can bypass anti-cheat systems by directly accessing and manipulating game memory without relying on the operating system please take a moment right now to hit that subscribe button and like button please take a moment right now to hit that subscribe button and like button thank you so uh reverse engineering and hooking that's another one right hackers reverse engineer anti-cheat systems to understand how they work and then hook into system functions to evade detection this involves creating custom shell code to jump to the hacker's driver in the kernel and then you have loading unsigned drivers hackers use exploits like kd mapper to load unsigned drivers into the kernel which can be used to bypass anti-cheat systems these methods highlight the ongoing cat and mouse game between hackers and anti-cheat developers where each side continually adapts and evolves to outmaneuver the other so how effective are server-side anti-cheats compared to kernel level ones so server-side anti-cheats have several advantages over kernel level anti-cheats in terms of effectiveness right it's harder to bypass right server-side anti-cheats are significantly more difficult for cheaters to work around compared to client-side solutions since they don't rely on detecting cheats on the player's computer but instead analyze gameplay data cheaters can't simply modify or hide their cheating software and then there's the proactive approach server side solutions can take a more proactive strategy by looking for anonym uh, anomalies right <laughs> anomalies in gameplay patterns rather than reactively searching for known cheat signatures this puts game developers ahead of cheat creators then you have uh, adaptability so when new cheats are identified server-side anti-cheats can be adjusted without modifying the game client developers can update detection parameters based on new gameplay events or changes in the game and then no false positives right server-side anti-cheats can achieve very low false positive rates by analyzing statistical patterns in player performance over time and there are no client trust issues right server-side solutions don't require trusting the client which is a fun fundamental security principle in online gaming even complex kernel monitoring can potentially be bypassed and then you have the machine learning potential right server-side approaches like valves of uh, vacnet system can leverage machine learning to improve cheat detection over time you also have platform independence that's the server-side anti-cheats work regardless of the client's operating system allowing for broader compatibility including linux gaming so while kernel level anti-cheats have some advantages in terms of immediate detection and prevention of certain cheat methods they also have limitations right we talked about a little bit the cat and mouse game kernel anti-cheats uh often engage in an ongoing battle with cheat developers who continually find new ways to bypass detection there's the potential security risk right kernel level solutions require deep system access which can introduce vulnerabilities if exploited then you have performance impact right kernel anti-cheats may have a greater impact on system performance compared to server side solutions and there's also limited uh, limitations of hardware right even kernel level anti-cheats can potentially be bypassed by 
hardware-based cheating methods like direct memory access, also known as DMA. So in conclusion, right, in, in, in this segment, uh, while both approaches have their merits, server-side anti-cheats are increasingly seen as more effective and sustainable in the long term. They offer better adapt uh, adaptability, lower false positive rates, and are harder to cheaters to circumvent, making them a more robust solution for maintaining fair play in online gaming. So now what are the potential risks of using kernel level anti-cheats, right? Uh, so kernel level anti-cheats pose several significant risks, right? And they're all, they're all around the same realm. Security vulnerabilities, right? Granting software such ex extensive access to system opens up potential vulnerabilities. Even a small flaw in the anti-cheat code could expose players to serious risks like data breaches or system compromises. And then there's privacy concerns. We all have certain privacy concerns. These anti-cheats can monitor and collect vast amounts of data from the system, including personal inf information unrelated to cheating. You have malware exploitation. That's, you know, there have been cases where kernel level anti-cheats were exploited by malicious actors. And there's also system instability, right? Kernel level drivers can cause system crashes if they malfunction, potentially requiring a full system restart. Uh, again, we talked about it, performance restart, right? Uh, or performance impact running at such a deep level may negatively affect system performance there's also that lack of transparency some anti-cheat solutions may have black box portions where the full source code is not available for scrutiny okay and again we talked about it but it has to be said again false positives there's a risk of innocent users being banned for having legitimate software that the anti-cheat mistakenly flags as suspicious uh so Escalation of privileges if compromised kernel level anti-cheats could potentially be used to gain unauthorized elevated access to the system. Uh, compatibility issues, these uh, solutions may conflict with other software or drivers on the system, right? So there's difficulty of removal, uh, you know, difficulty in removal. Uh, kernel level anti-cheats can be challenging to completely remove from a system once installed. So. Given the risk, right? Given the risk, many cybersecurity professionals and gamers express concern about the widespread adop uh, adoption of kernel level anti cheat solutions, arguing that alternative approaches should be prioritized to balance game integrity with user security and privacy, right? So there has been some, in there has been an incident, right? There was a significant incident involving kernel level anti cheats, right? One of the most notable cases occurred in July 2022. Uh, a major vulnerability was discovered in, uh, and you, Peter, you can put that on screen, mhyprot2.sys, uh, the kernel level anti cheat driver used by Genshin Impact, developed by uh, MiHoYo. Uh, this driver had full read and write access to all system memory due to its kernel level privileges, right? So it was really severe. It was really severe, that one. You know, hackers were able to exploit the anti-cheat driver to disable antivirus software on victims' PCs, right? And with antivirus defenses neutralized, attackers could then deliver ransomware to the compromised systems. So that's what I have for you today. Please take a moment to hit that subscribe button and like button. Please take a moment to hit that subscribe button and like button. I appreciate viewership. Stay safe. See you in the next video.